Now attention is turning to the leadership elections that will be playing out among both parties. Arizona GOP Congressman Andy Biggs announced last night that he will challenge House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy for the Speaker's job if the GOP prevails. Julia Manchester, a national political reporter for The Hill, joins us now. Marjorie Taylor Greene, uh, Julia, said that that was a bad idea for anyone to challenge Kevin McCarthy, and you would think she would be a supporter of Andy Biggs. They're from very much the same part of the Republican Party. So what do you make of any leadership challenge to Kevin McCarthy should he become uh, should the Republicans take the majority and should he be running for Speaker of the House again? Yeah, interesting dynamics there, Mitch. And I think part of the reason why Marjorie Taylor Greene is saying it would be a bad idea for someone like Andy Biggs to challenge Kevin McCarthy is because Donald Trump has thrown his support behind Kevin McCarthy. Yet, Mitch, we still see that wing of the Republican Party, the pro-Trump Freedom Caucus in the House. You know, we're hearing a lot of rumblings about whether um, they will, you know, very much try to put up a wall of resistance to Kevin McCarthy becoming speaker. And it's interesting because there is, I think, this pushback to the idea that Republicans didn't do as well as expected in the 2022 midterm elections. It was a red trickle. It wasn't a red wave. So there's a lot of finger pointing right now. But, you know, I think a lot of outsiders would argue that a lot of that is because of the pro-Trump side of the party. We saw that a lot of Trump's endorsed election denying candidates across the country uh, did not win their election bids. And in fact, Democrats ended up prevailing, which sort of blocked this idea of a red wave. So right now, a lot of finger pointing, but I think there is a need um, that Republicans are voicing within the caucus to be united around Kevin McCarthy. He has essentially been their leader right now. I think they want to try to keep things consistent. And he also has the backing of the former president. And that, we know, Mitch, is very paramount in all Republican politics these days. He also, Julia, as far as what I've read, is a really good fundraiser. And I certainly wouldn't lay any of the failures of the Republican Party on election night at his feet, he won his election. So is there some specific gripe with McCarthy himself? I know that there was some trouble getting him in in the first place the first time he was Speaker of the House. So is that still lingering from the first election where he uh, became Speaker of the House? Yeah, I think what we see is a divide within the Republican caucus and a divide within the Republican Party altogether, a divide that has been there for quite some time right now as to whether to go with someone who is a part of the establishment or someone who is more seen as an outsider. Kevin McCarthy is very much seen as a part of the establishment, even though he has very much, um, you know, gone to seek the approval of Donald Trump while at the same time, at times speaking out against Donald Trump, notably after January sixth, he is the Republican establishment. And for all intents and purposes right now, Mitch, uh, Donald Trump is the Republican establishment right now. So, you know, I think there are, you know, issues with certain members of Republican leadership. We also see a similar dynamic playing out in the House where you have some finger pointing at Mitch McConnell, for example. However, I think ultimately these two leaders are ultimately going to prevail. Let's look at the other side real quickly here. Nancy Pelosi, uh, longtime Speaker of the House, long time leader of the Democrats in the House. She's being asked whether or not she will run to be minority leader if the Democrats do not prevail in the House. The fact that she's being asked, I think, is pretty significant because I think it was just assumed and now it's not necessarily assumed. So might she be moving on as well from leadership? Yeah, we know that she said in an interview with another network after um, the, the horrible attack on her husband that, you know, that could impact her decision. However, did, she didn't really say whether what which way it would impact her decision. Um, look, there is a younger generation of Democrats waiting in the wings to take on leadership. They are more progressive. Uh, they obviously are fresher faces. So there are those questions being raised. But at the same time, Mitch, Nancy Pelosi is really good at her job. Uh, you want to call us talk about uh, being good at fundraising. Nancy Pelosi is good at fundraising and she is very good at whipping her caucus together. And, you know, we knew that this was going to be a tough year for Democrats in the House. But even if Democrats lose the House, Mitch, um, they're going to lose it by a much narrower margin than expected. And I think uh, Nancy Pelosi will likely uh, get credit for some of that. So we'll see what happens here. But I think we 
are starting to see the rumblings of a generational shift in the Democratic Party really come to light. But that being said, don't count Nancy Pelosi out. She is, um, you know, very good at her job and seen as an extremely important figure in the Democratic Party and establishment. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.